everybody, here's a really exciting opportunity. Me, Omaze, and Adventure Drives have come together to offer you the potential to win an epic road trip across the Pacific Northwest in a 2020 C8 Corvette. Omaze will send you and a friend to Seattle to do the Adventure Drives road trip with me and my wife and Rob Ferretti and a bunch of our friends. I'll be in a Lamborghini. You're going to be set up in their brand new C8 Corvette. They're going to give you a thousand bucks for fuel, covering all the expenses, and we are going to drive together across the Pacific Northwest. It all benefits a great cause, Team Rubicon, which helps keep returning soldiers employed in disaster relief areas. I love this charity. It's a great cause. Go to omaze.com slash TST to enter or hit the link in the description where I've got a link for you right there. Very, very easy. Get on it, guys. Come on a road trip with me and Omaze in the new Corvette this summer. Now enjoy this video. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Angeles Forest on a brisk and damp day. It's been raining all night and just stopped like a half hour ago, so it's not coming down, but the roads are wet. It's actually quite good for the car that we're driving today. This is the 2020 Volvo V60 Polst, uh, engineered by Polestar, Polestar engineered. Um, and basically, it's the fast one. So you can get the regular V60 that's got the Polestar tune on it, the gas engine. This one is the hybrid. You see Polestar is, has chosen to position themselves as the electrification thing. They're Polestar 1, which uh, I was supposed to drive later this month, but it was canceled for coronavirus. Uh, that's their halo. That's the EV. Here, um, they are using hybridization to make Volvos go faster, uh, in indicated by the fact that this is called a T8. Like Volvos, like T5 is a five-cylinder, T6 is a six-cylinder, T8 uh, is not an eight-cylinder. T8 means you have a two-liter turbocharged and supercharged inline four powering the front wheels. Uh, with an eight-speed automatic gearbox. That's 328 horsepower and 317 pound-feet at the front wheels. You then have an 11.6 kilowatt-hour battery and two electric motors on the rear wheels, creating an all-wheel drive system. Uh, now, this vehicle can be driven for 22 to 23 miles on pure EV mode. It's plug-in at home. Uh, you also can get around, I believe, 30, 32 on just gas, um, and then you have a combination. There's different drive modes for whatever you want to be doing. Um, car and driver, uh, who does instrumented testing, recorded a 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds and a quarter mile time of 12.9 at 107 miles an hour. By comparison's sake, uh, that is basically what a C5 Corvette ran. Uh, out of the box. That's pretty much what my Corvette ran out of the box. And we're now talking about a 4,522 pound station wagon. Uh, on that weight, if that sounds heavy, it's because it is. And um, it's 556 pounds heavier than the old car, my wife's uh, Volvo V60 R design with the Polestar tune. And so even though you've got a total of 415 horsepower, and 494 pounds of torque in this car, it's actually a little slower than the old car in acceleration because of that weight. Uh, having said that, uh, Jason Camisa would like you to know uh, that the 4.4 zero to 60 this car is good. What's very good is the 4.8 five to 60. And what that means is you can get pretty close to the car's real zero to 60 potential just from a red light without having to do some kind of abusive launch. That's the key. If the 0 to 60 and the 5 to 60 are way different, your car is only fast if you hammer the crap out of it on a launch, and you may not want to do that. So uh, let's, uh, yeah, that's about it. We've got big brakes, nice big brakes with gold calipers, and now we're going to put our drive mode into Polestar engineered mode. You've got constant all-wheel drive, normal EV only, and then Polestar. So here we go. We're off. Damp roads. 
it is definitely not giving me the full beams. This is not, I don't know if there's a traction control system working. Well, there certainly must be a traction control system working when you've got sort of an infinitely variable all-wheel drive system like this. Without a traction control system, I think it would be a complete disaster. One of my favorite things about the Polestar engineered V60 is the standard Olin's adjustable dampers. Factory standard Olin's, people. Uh, Olin's, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, is a very high-end shock absorber typically associated with uh, high-end motorsport. Put them in modified Ferraris and modified M3s, modified Porsches. Uh, to have an Olin's damper from the factory, especially an adjustable one, and I'm not talking about the buttons here, people. I mean, you open the hood and turn knobs. Uh, for a factory hybrid Volvo, that's pretty crazy. Like, you can't have a manual gearbox, you gotta have all this other stuff, you gotta have a heavy car, but we're gonna let you click these shocks. Like, that's weird and kind of cool. Of course, they contribute to what I find to be a pretty good ride. Uh, we've got big rims and uh, relatively low profile continental tires on this vehicle. Uh, and in my, in my short experience so far, the grip seems to be fine, but you definitely get some, some real firmness over uh, the jarring uh, cracks and, and potholes. Yeah, they absorb the bumps in the road very well. And now that we're on this smooth section, we're gonna see how it handles. Granted, wet roads, so we're not gonna really be exploring the limits of grip. I will say that although it has uh, paddle shifters to control the manual gearbox, I can't figure out how to get it to stay in manual. It goes back into automatic if you don't change gear after a few seconds, and the paddles themselves are not not the most responsive. Uh, the, the last gen V60 Polestar I drove, that was a weak point. That car's six-speed automatic gearbox had kind of, see, I just upshifted, it upshifted there for no real reason. It also won't let you downshift unless you have really a lot, a lot of room. If you're going to downshift and that's going to put the engine within a couple hundred RPM of the red line, it will not give you that downshift. It won't give you the shift unless you have really a lot of room to play with. Now, it is quick. It, may, it certainly makes some really interesting noises. You, it starts off with some supercharger wind down low, and then I can get some, some turbo whooshing up top. You don't really hear the electric powertrain helping at all, um, but it, it's there. It does feel heavy, I'm, I'm not gonna lie about that, and it does feel distant. Uh, the steering is super video gamey. Um, Volvo's steering has never really been my favorite. I didn't love the steering of the last gen car either. This is a great, great car for someone who really just wants an everyday car, but that they can drive in a sporty manner, you know, if they want to. It's not, for someone who is really in tune with the finer, finer points of chassis dynamics and response and vehicle communicativeness, I think they would find this thing a little bit lacking. That doesn't mean as a car guy, I don't really enjoy it. Au contraire. I have found it to be quite wonderful to use in the city every day. Up here where we're filming, it's not ideal, but it gets through it, right? It doesn't. I wonder what it sounds like if we go windows down in the tunnel with this funky powertrain. What will it sound like? Let's put it in second gear. Okay, ready? Yeah. If I gotta be honest, it sounds like air moving around. It just sounds like air moving around. Um, not exactly an inspiring powertrain, although technically, 
I mean, I don't know if it gets more complicated than a turbo, a supercharger, and two electric motors. I think that's that's pretty much peak everything. <laughs> we have shoved every technological advancement as we can in this car. No, what I really like about it as a city car is that you've got that 25 miles of EV range. That is an accurate number, I believe. And that it charges up on a, a regular 110 outlet in my house very quickly. I mean, I think it's very interesting that you could use this for these short little trips as a pure EV. And it's it's fine. And, you know, it's obviously, it's not super fast in EV mode. It's not a Tesla. But if you're talking about just cruising around city traffics, it's absolutely fine. Plenty of torque. Um, and uh, and it's it's you know, the, the good things with electric cars are refinement, uh, silence, things like that. And to take a car that has Volvo's uh, interior quality materials and the refinement that they already bring to the table, which is high, which is, which is very good, I think to then combine that with the option to go silent, like let's just for, just for fun, I've got 13 miles on the EV right now. So here we go. We're now, oh, come on, engine, turn off. Pure EV. Pure EV. Oh, there we go. The engine is now off. And we are cruising in pure EV. I think there is a top speed of pure EV. We'll see when the, uh, no, hasn't come in. Up to, up to 50, you're good at least. Um, and what's also cool about this is that in addition to that pure EV driving, let's go back to Polestar Engineered, engine comes back on and we're off. Um, you know, like Porsche's e-hybrids, what you can do is put it in charge mode, right? You've got an engine, that's an onboard generator. Why not use it? And so you can strategize uh, for instance, let's say you have a 20 mile commute, three miles in the city, uh, 14 miles on the highway, and then another three miles on uh, the surface streets on the other end. You could switch to EV for leaving your house, for going in the city, switch it to gas for your highway commute, and then switch it back to EV so you can optimize your car for what you need. And because it can charge itself and because it's a hybrid, you have the benefits of an EV powertrain, a supplemental EV powertrain, without any of the range anxiety. You're not getting stranded anywhere. Man, so it's quick, but it's not like fast, fast. Like it weighs the same as the Audi RS6 and it's got like a hundred less horsepower than that. Um, having said that, it's $70,000 less than the Audi RS6. So maybe that's not a fair comparison. Let's talk price though. 68 grand. It's kind of pricey for the Polestar engineered one. Now you can get into a Volvo V60 for a lot less. I think it starts in the high 30s. Um, but for this one, you get everything, right? You get the best brakes. You get the Olin's uh, shocks. You get hybridization, supercharging, turbocharging. I mean, you get good tires, you get some subtle body styling cues indicating that this is the more special one. And you do get performance. It performs well. It rides well. It soaks up mid-corner bumps really well. The seats are the best I have sat in south of an AMG S-Class Mercedes. I have a Maserati Levante Trofeo in the garage right now. It's a $150,000 SUV. And the seats in this are way better than that. I love the combinations of leather and cloth. I love the way they give you this yellow seat belt to indicate that you've got a Polestar tuned car. It's a subtle cue. Go! And I really like how they've used that hybrid powertrain to create an all-wheel drive system. You know, Volvo's older cars, the last gen of this car that had the transverse inline six, that had a really interesting Haldex type all-wheel drive setup. Let's clean that windshield. Um, but you'd end up, it would end up torque steering and, and it did some funky stuff when you really 
were pushing the limits of uh, grip. And so what I really like about this, as well as what I like about the Acura NSX's uh, hybrid all-wheel drive system, is that it provides an infinitely variable solution to the problem of all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is inherently limited by the fact that it's gears. There's clutches and there's all kinds of mechanically opening and closing clutches, but fundamentally, it's based on certain principles of rotation that cannot be ignored. When you create an all-wheel drive system based on electric motors, well, now you've created an all-wheel drive system that is not bound by the laws of constant rotation of gears and stuff. You can reverse polarity, you can break one side, and you know you can infinitely torque vector, which is very, very cool. And while I haven't had the opportunity to drive this car in the um, in the snow, uh, I find that going quick up here in the wet is certainly confidence inspiring, uh, and not the kind of thing I should. I am. Uh, I'm really concerned about. This is a good, good car. And I think that while it's sad that you know. <laughs> How often have I said, I've said this a million times in other different cars, I don't want to be a hypocrite, right? The new version of the of the car doesn't always need to be faster, and it's people like me that have perpetuated the myth that the newest version always has to be faster. Uh, I think this version, compared to the old version, even though it's not as fast, I think they have built a much better car. I think in, in all the ways you can improve a car. Efficiency, the ride, the interior, the seating position, the MMI, um, the intuitiveness. In all the ways you can improve a car, Volvo has improved this V60 uh, Polestar. And they haven't really lost any of the things that made it good before. It's still got the Olins. It's still got the maximum performance tune from the engine. It's still got little subtle cues here and there to indicate it's not just the regular one. It still looks phenomenal. Still easy to use every day. Great to use every day. Um, and so there's really a lot to this thing to like. It's a little expensive at 68000 yeah. Um, but it's not obscenely more expensive than the last one, you know? I like these brakes. We're going uphill, so the one thing you don't get, although you do get the trick of the hybrid uh, rear drive system, you don't get rear steer. And so while I don't think you need it, I think the car handles fine, fine as it is. I think that's the one heavy uh, bit of technology that has not made it into this car. <laughs> it, is, it probably will be in the next generation one. Come on. I wish, if there was one thing I wished about the car dynamically, it's actually not that it, it's faster. I think it's fast enough. I think if I wished for something, it would be better manual control of the gearbox because I really feel like I don't have any. And I really feel like the engine, gas engine, kind of has a mind of its own and is just going to do what it wants. It, it's sort of likes to sit in between three and four thousand it doesn't really like to go uh, up to the top but in general um, <clears throat> what a beautiful usable um, technologically advanced uh, and, and fun uh, daily driver this is a really fun car to use every day I, I enjoy the game of do I go battery do I go hybrid what is my charging strategy that's actually fun because there's no real consequence I'm never gonna run out you know what I mean um, and so let me just go back to my notes and see if I missed anything before I bid you farewell um, good the seats are amazing it's great looking tons of space smart storage uh, car play works great. The materials are great. Uh, I love the lack of any obvious part sharing. That's true. I uh, I don't look around this car, and I can't identify parts that are from other cars, be it switches or software or whatever. I really like the fact that when you buy a Volvo, 
you don't, there is no obvious parts sharing with other cars. Um, the bad, uh, the shifter is not quite intuitive. It's an electronic button that you have to, you got to hit it twice to go to reverse and then twice you got to move it sequentially through neutral. So it's fine. It's just not intuitive. Um, and then the uh, charge door, which I uh, uh, is over here. Sometimes it doesn't want to close all the way. It's a, it's a, it sometimes has a pop, a pop thing. Um, but that's really it. The rest of it, I really like a lot as an everyday car. It's practical, it's incredibly well-made and beautiful. It feels luxurious and it's comfortable and spacious and it really has all the things I'm looking for from a Volvo wagon. So thank you to Volvo for letting me have a go this week. I really appreciate it. Thank you to you for watching what has turned into an awfully long video. And uh, that's it, I'll see you next time.